This video shows my process on creating a large, multi-day painting and plein air. I share some of my insights for creating texture, atmospheric perspective, and my thoughts on refinement in oil painting. All the clips are taken from a much longer three-part tutorial on my Patreon, where I offer in-depth painting tutorials and also one-on-one mentorships, but more info on that later and out of the actual painting. I'm here in Sedona, I'm doing a plein air festival, and this is one of the more ambitious paintings I wanted to start. This is going to be an opportunity to paint a little bit larger, do a painting that's multi-sessions, get into the nitty-gritty of actual painting. I'm gonna take a whole bunch of cobalt blue and some titanium white. Painting such an atmospheric scene in the distance, I'm gonna to try to focus on the color and bring up the jewel-like effect, what's in shadow, what's in the light, trying to capture the sense of atmosphere. But it's important when painting to not make your shadows too dark. I can take a little hole with my hand, make a tiny little hole, and hold it out and isolate that color, similar to a viewfinder. The big challenge when starting is always placement. I'm looking at my shapes and I'm also triangulating. So it's a matter of getting the right spots in the right places. Also now I see that there are shadow, the shadows coming up, off to the side, and then it sort of makes a square. I look for these squares very often in my composition. So from about this point, so this point needs to come up a bit. What I'm mostly doing right now is I'm figuring out the drawing through my shadow shape. I can set up these larger shapes. I can go back in and adjust working out some smaller shapes that will eventually inform my larger shapes. It's always good when your painting's working on an abstract level. Now that that area of the painting is working, I want to turn my attention to blocking in some of the color. Having worked out a fair amount of the drawing, this stage is almost akin to coloring in the lines. You get the lines right, you get the color right, and then you just fill it in. It's kind of flat color for now, but that's okay. For this painting, I'm keying off of my shadows. I isolated that color. I saw how light that blue was. I mixed that blue. I used it to draw in the drawing within my painting. And now I'm also keying off of it, which means every color that I'm putting down, I'm relating to that blue. I put down the red rocks. I noted that it has to be a fair amount lighter, but not overly saturated. It's lighter than blue. Now when I'm gonna mix in the greens, the greens also have to be lighter than this blue. But now, having this relationship, I can say, aha, well, the greens are lighter than the blue shadow, but they're a step darker than the red rock and light. That's what I'm gonna try to mix right now on my palette. Hold up my mixture. Uh, it's looking like it's the exact same value. I don't want that. I want something lighter. So I'm drawing in smaller and smaller details within my painting, and that's gonna let me refine my painting further. All of a sudden the sun came down over the hill behind me and now I am painting in shadow. Just sculpting out some more details until the light really fades and I really, really need to stop. Using up that lead white that I have. I do have, I did have two whites today. I had my titanium, which is really good for covering the canvas and I had my lead, which is really good for creating some interesting textures and piling on the paint. People ask, is lead necessary? It's not super necessary. I do find it very helpful personally. I think that was a good first session. I blocked in the entire painting. I got the rough drawing. I got the rough color. I got enough paint on it that it's going to be really interesting to layer. Often it's that layering process that can, I find, create a lot of interesting texture, especially when the painting is half dry. Back here for day two, the painting's already begun, and now it's a matter of refinement, adding detail. The focus of today is to try to start adding some interesting textures onto the painting. It's a lot easier when working in multiple sessions, when we're working on multiple layers. And one of the things that happens when we're working on multiple layers is that we can start playing with color and value a little bit more. So right now I'm taking an Egbert brush, which is a very long filbert. And now with this Egbert, I'm able to make a few different interesting marks. And by using a lot of paint, applying strokes in different directions, 
different methods. That's one of the things that we can do with our brush right now. When we twirl it, we can get a cleaner edge. Like so. As I'm adding more texture, what I'm still doing is I'm still drawing. Every mark that I put down is related to something that I see. Dragging the brush flat side over also creates some interesting texture. So I'm gonna start going in, drawing these smaller and smaller shapes that I'm seeing. And those are already beginning to really inform my painting. There's an idea that applies to painting foliage as well as painting red rocks or painting anything. When we are layering opaquely with paint, with texture, if we're working transparently, if we're working in watercolors, the rules are different. When we're trying to create depth and a sensation of light, it helps to have a darker color in the underlying layer. Why? Because what we're trying to do with paint is we're trying to create a sensation of depth. We're trying to actually accurately capture what it is that we see out there. Now take foliage as an example. The inner parts of the foliage, the deepest layers of a tree that you might paint underneath, the ones that are on the outside are on the topmost layer, the ones that are nearest towards us. They're the ones that are furthest out towards the light. It's the ones that are deepest inside, the deepest underneath that have occlusion, that have shadow, that the light doesn't reach. So it's helpful having a darker layer first and then layering in lighter layers on top. There are a lot of ways that we can build texture. There are a lot of different tools that we can use. We don't only have to use our brushes. There are people that do all sorts of different weird things and they go to the hardware store, buy whatever tool or buy something from Martha's Stewart's little catalog or all sorts of different cool things to get cool texture. But I like to keep things simple and just use my palette knife sometimes. So I'm gonna load up my palette knife, creating some interesting shapes right where all these rocks are. So today's the last day I have on this painting. This is gonna be the third session. Right now with this palette knife, I'm able to test out whether it's dry or not. It's mostly dry, it's dry enough, and it's gonna let me make some finishing touches on this painting. I really wanna get into texture, noise, some of the abstraction using the paint quality to depict the character of the rocks. And be very careful now that I'm not gonna overdo it, but I'm just gonna carefully observe every little mark that I see in nature. And I'm gonna work from observation to capture that as accurately as I can. And now by painting on top of that, having a textured ground, all of my marks want to express that texture and they're gonna add that texture and they're gonna be more textured. That's looking decent. It's a matter of finding more areas to model, finding more areas that have opportunities to find interesting marks, interesting texture. Now, I want to work into some of the shadows. The lights are already full of texture. They're doing well, but it's the shadows that I still feel like I can get a lot more color variety in them. I use the broken color to really create a whole lot of vibrancy. If we think of, I think it's Paul Signac, French impressionist, the pointillist painter. What he did was he had a lot of color that was broken. There would be two small color strokes side by side, which would optically mix viewing the painting from far. But when you look up close, you realize it's all just separate depths of color and somehow they all mix together. But so that's something that we can incorporate in our own paintings. All right, I think I'll call it. That was a bit of a bigger painting for me. I don't always work this large outside, but when I do, it can be a lot of fun. And it was really fun playing with some more texture. But um, yeah.
Hey guys, before you leave, be sure to check out my Patreon if you're interested in more in-depth painting tutorials. I have a lot of great plein air content out there already and a lot more stuff on the horizon. Be sure to follow my Instagram if you're interested in following my personal art and seeing what I'm working on the day to day. And if maybe one day you'd want to take a workshop with me or even buy one of my paintings, sign up to my mailing list to not miss any important announcements for those things. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.